So now after learning about the criteria graduate schools are looking for, the next question probably will be now which school or program should I apply? Now, of course, we know different schools and programs have other uh, different admission requirements. Some are strict, some are easier. Um, my own observation, we probably can roughly divide graduate schools into three kinds based on their acceptance rate. You know, in other words, number of applicants divided by number admitted. Of course, uh, this is definitely not an expert's opinion. Um, this is just based on my observation and my knowledge. So, Three kinds of graduate schools. The first is called for-profit, also called proprietary university. Uh, for example, University of Phoenix, Kaplan University, Walden University, or Grand Canyon University. Um, basically, they accept everyone. Uh, hint for profit. Pretty much, they just uh, they want your money, right? So, they accept uh, anybody who can uh, apply for student loan. Now, the good thing about this type of universities is it's convenient because uh, many, if not all, offer purely online programs. Now, online programs is really convenient and uh, flexible, right? It's a little bit like uh, fast food restaurants, you know, everything's a quick fix. Of course, this type of universities, to my knowledge, uh, has some problems. The first problem is uh, they can be predatory. For example, take a look at this report, and by no means this is the only report, this is an exception, okay? There are tons of reports like this. So this is report is by Miami Herald on the YouTube channel. Um, Kaplan graduate says a degree means absolutely nothing because later she found out toward the end of her graduation, it has no accreditation. So um, if you want to find out more, um, just uh, go to UFD channel and uh, search this keyword. The second problem is even if you get a degree from a program with accreditation, I'm not so sure if it's really useful for searching for a job. If after evaluating all the factors and you decide that you want to consider this type of universities, I would strongly encourage you to ask the program and probably also search online or go to um, the higher education department of your state and ask the following three questions. The first is, is it accredited? And second, how much does it cost? A lot of students, after getting the degrees from this type of universities, uh, they are in deep debt. Third is, what is the graduate employment rate in a year? I think every single graduate program should be able to provide information uh, to those, uh, those three questions. If they cannot answer you or don't answer you right away or give you some ambiguous answers, um, uh, you probably know something fishy out there. What I'm saying is that I strongly suggest you be careful. Now, on the other hand, many of my colleagues, they are getting degrees from this kind of universities. But the point is, um, they already have a job. All they need is just a degree for their promotion. So if you already have a job, all you need is just a, a degree, you know, PhD, whatever, for your promotion, you maybe can consider this, uh, getting a degree from this type of universities. Otherwise, my suggestions uh, will be to shy away from this type of programs. That's my personal opinion. Uh, the second kind of graduate schools, regional universities. For example, Gonzaga University, New Mexico Tech, Fort Hayes State University, uh, Angelo State University. Uh, usually, this type of uni universities that they are smaller, they offer master's programs, but uh, not doctoral. Well, some, some of them do, of course. This type of master programs uh, is called terminal master's degree. That means um, they only offer you up to master level, uh, not doctoral. So if you want to pursue a doctoral level uh, a degree, then you need to go somewhere else and that offer the doctoral, doctoral program. In general, we're saying in general, okay, acceptance rates are higher 
for this type of universities than bigger national universities. But of course, there are exceptions. Uh, so for example, like in New Mexico Tech, uh, it's a very good school and the, their acceptance rate is not really high. Some programs from this type of schools might not require GRE, or they might let you substitute with other criteria like, um, hey, I have higher GPA, I have a long working experience, I can waive GRE. So you need to talk to the specific programs. This type of uh, program, graduate schools, are they are a little bit less likely to be research focused. Of course, some are. Like uh, again, I'm gonna go back to Gonzaga, New Mexico Tech. I went to their campus, and uh, in the psychology departments, uh, I see a lot of uh, research uh, posted on on the walls. That pretty much suggests that they are very research oriented. But even if some schools are uh, they are not really research focused. Uh, don't be mistaken. That doesn't necessarily mean you don't need research experience to get in. In other words, some programs they not uh, do a lot of research when you are there. But uh, in order to admit students, they want to make sure those students uh, at least know something about uh, conducting research. After you get a degree from this type of universities, jobs are usually available at least in the region. But maybe not necessarily um, uh, in the national level. Probably I should um, tell you a brief story. Both my wife and I went to a uh, regional graduate school called Pittsburgh State University in Kansas. And uh, my wife got her community counseling license over there. However, after that, we moved to another city, uh, the Manhattan, Kansas. I study. Kansas State University over there for my PhD. And uh, guess what? With her license, she couldn't find a job over there. When my wife decided maybe she go back to school to Kansas State University and pursue their um, marriage and family therapy uh, program, she imagined she, can, uh, she has a license already, so she should be able to transfer a lot of credits uh, to Kansas State. But the people over there, I don't know, big school probably is maybe snobby. They tell her, say, oh, uh, we don't know about uh, Pittsburgh State too much. So if you come here, you need to start over again. Also, what I mean is um, if you go into regional universities, because they, are, they tend to be a little bit smaller, the license, the degrees uh, you get from these universities uh, should be useful in that region. But if you go to another places, you need to do some more investigations. Now, finally, the third kind is national universities. For example, Stanford University, Kansas State, UNM, and NSU. Um, of course, I mentioned Kansas State because I got my degrees over there. <laughs> uh, in general, this type of uh, graduate schools has the lowest acceptance rates. They are the most competitive. This type of graduate schools, they focus on three things. First, research, and second, research, and third, research. Now, it gives you a hint. If you don't have research experience or you don't like research, you will not survive. You won't even get in, I guarantee. Pretty much guarantee. I probably cannot say 100%, but anything can happen. Also, they require everything. They definitely require your GRE, GPA, um, recommendation letters, and with higher standards. Though, I believe that they put less emphasis on work experience. Um, there might be some exceptions. For example, some clinical psychology programs, they might want, or want you to have some work experience. What's interesting about this type of uh, graduate schools is they also offer many of them offer non-terminal masters that means the master level is only a part of a doctoral program when you are admitted the goal is for you to get a phd okay so after earning a master you are expected to pass a comprehensive exam which is called prelim and then you pursue a phd when you pass that exam now this exam just so you know there are usually two chances uh, the first one is a written exam, and uh, assuming you don't pass, then the second one they will move to oral exam. And uh, if 
so unfortunately you don't pass as well you only get your master's degree from this school and you cannot pursue your PhD here um, of course you can go somewhere else but um, uh, then another school will probably you will, will want to test you in. this type of schools the good thing is that um, they are more, more likely to have great financial aid package so for example when I pursue my PhD and by the way I spent seven years <laughs> Uh, my excuse is um, uh, I have three kids and uh, both my wife and, and I are working and pursuing PhD at the same time. And uh, this is a master in the doctoral combined. Yeah. So when I pursue my PhD, I didn't pay a dime for my PhD and I got paid for this whole th seven years. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about um, uh, some financial aid issue later. How do you know um, a certain school belongs to which kind? Right? It's very easy. You just Google the school name. Just another thing I want to mention is about school rankings. I think the most popular rankings is done by uh, a media, you know, a website called the U.S. News and World Report. Um, if you want to know a school's ranking, you just Google the school's name and the word ranking combined together. So, for example, UNM ranking. This website ranks schools into different categories, like national universities, regional universities, uh, liberal arts, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, rankings at least tells you the school's reputations and also a critical component, how hard to get in. Okay. The higher the ranking, the harder to get in, of course. Uh, on the other hand, though, when you try to apply for graduate school, it should not be the only factor you consider. Ranking is not everything. So let's talk about something related, acceptance rate. National universities, uh, as we said, in general, has the lowest uh, acceptance rate. But of course, uh, there are a lot of exceptions. Uh, regional universities, in general, might be a little bit higher. Right? Uh, but not only by schools. Across different subfields or disciplines, acceptance rates can vary tremendously. So let me show you these two tables. Okay, the first one, this table one, uh, on the left hand side, uh, there are there are different areas or you know, subfields or disciplines, whatever you want to call it. And as I said, psychology is a very, very broad field. So this is just part of the list. Most of my students, when I ask them what areas they're interested, they mention clinical or counseling. It's kind of like um, these two are the same thing. Actually, they are not. Just look at the acceptance rates. So this column is uh, the master's uh, acceptance rate and that is doctor. As you can see, clinical is only 37% uh, for the master's. How about counseling? 63. Much, much higher. Okay. In fact, clinical psychology probably is the most competitive programs in the field of psychology. It probably is even harder than medical school. Right. Now, how about um, uh, the doctoral level acceptance rate? Now here you say table two. Let's take a look at uh, counseling psychology first. It's about 30%. That sounds really low. Take a look at clinical psychology, table two here. Now as you can see, there are different types of degrees. First two is called Psy D. Oh, this seems to be high. There's some trade-off. But this focus on the PhD. And take a look at this is only 16%, 14%, or pure purely research oriented, it's a 7%. As I said, it's even more competitive than medical school. Come back to the side D. Side D means they don't do research. However, they are much, much more expensive. And what's interesting is about some other fields. Take a look at this social and personality psychology. The master degree is only 39% and the doctoral is only 12%. To be honest, I'm really surprised by this number because I am a social psychologist and I didn't know our acceptance rate is so low. I guess, I think because it varies from schools to school. I'm either lucky or Kansas State, I show pity on me. <laughs> um, anyway, 